Hello all, my name is Baja Batum. I'm a nurse anesthetist and I would like to describe to you guys a rewiring technique to obtain large bore IV access using a micropuncture kit. The first thing we'll do is actually quote Albert Einstein. I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious. And curiosity kind of led me to discovering this technique through experimentation. And so working at one of the busiest trauma centers in the world, I'm really obsessed with vascular access and fluid and blood resuscitation. And so vascular access has to be one of those things. And so one of the anesthesia techs one day was collecting and disposing of expired equipment. Among that equipment happened to be this muncture puncture kit, a bunch of them actually. And so I asked them if I can keep them and experiment with them. And so through experimentation, you know, I practice um, placing these and then actually wind up experimenting with different angiocatheters over the dilator. And I discovered that the 14 gauge angiocatheter fits perfectly over the five French dilator. And this is what really makes this technique kind of work. So after experimenting and discovering this technique and using it in the operating room a few times, I decided I wanted to try to write the article. But unfortunately for me, when I went to go do a literature search, I actually found this article describing the technique that I had just discovered um, by Dr. Bowman and Dr. Neto. So they are the first to actually describe this technique. Um, and what I'll talk about is kind of some modifications or other uses for this technique. Um, but regardless, I, for them, what they used was the entire micropuncture kit. So they actually got their initial access using the micropuncture needle, using the micropuncture wire, and then actually the dilator and the 14 gauge angiocatheter. And so things that I would like to say is that this is a very useful technique, right? So, you know, we struggle all the time to try to get large bore IV access in patients that might be, you know, otherwise dehydrated and their veins are flat. But you can use a small angiocatheter as small as a 20 gauge IV or even a 22 gauge IV and actually rewire that and then get a 14 gauge angiocatheter over it. I think this technique has um, applicability in a wide variety of settings such as anesthesia, trauma, critical care. Like I said, I use it all the time when I'm doing, you know, recessed cases and things along those lines. Um, but I think this is kind of an underrated technique and one that is ready for prime time. It could be used on a much wider basis. Um, like I said, I will just talk about, you know, briefly about how to do this technique and a couple of nuances associated with this technique. So before going on to describing the technique, let's look at kind of IV access and how fast you can get different, uh, you know, a liter of fluid into a patient using a nap rapid infuser. And so a couple of guys, they did an experiment where they used a range of rapid infuser. They pumped it up to 300 millimeters of mercury and they tried to pump in a liter of fluid uh, using different types of angiocatheters, central lines, RIC catheters, and how long would it take to get the this one liter of fluid in? And as you can see here, these are the times, right? So if you look at the 14 gauge angiocatheter, it actually performs pretty well. It's actually up there with a RIC catheter, uh, eight and a half French and seven French, um, as well as a cordis. And so they were able to pump in one liter of fluid under pressure in about a minute and 30 seconds. And so if you look at an angiocatheter itself, you look on the back sides and look at the flow rate, a 14 gauge angiocatheter will get you something like 330 mLs per minute. And so, like I said, if you just let it go by gravity in some sort of like saline solution, in about three minutes, you'll get a liter in. And so that's actually pretty good. Now look at an 18 gauge angiocatheter over with pressure. It was over four minutes. And so it takes a little bit longer, but as you can, if you look at this bottom scale right here on this bottom picture, you can see from left to right has the fastest flows, right? So the two RIC catheters, the cores, and then the 14 gauge IV. And actually works pretty well in comparison. So you can get decent volume through a 14 gauge angiocatheter. And so if you want to look at this experiment and read the article associated with or the web page associated with it, scan this QR code. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is upsizing current or uh, vascular access that you've 
establish yourself. And so these are the components that we're going to work with. We have a simulated blood vessel, 18 gauge angiocatheter, 14 gauge angiocatheter, a micropuncture dilator, and a micropuncture wire. These things were obtained from this kind of kit, a micropuncture um, introducer set. And I said, these are the important parts. The wire itself, which is 0 0.018 inches, and the five French dilator. And this is what I took out of the kit. And so this can, technique can be used either for um, rewiring an existing IV, or if you start an, uh, exist, uh, start an IV like I'm gonna do right now. And so before I start, Things that you want to do is you want to make sure that you um, load your 14 gauge angiocatheter onto your micropuncture dilator. And so, interesting enough, through experimentation, I actually found out that this 14 gauge angiocatheter slides over perfectly and fits perfectly over this dilator. And you can see right here, there's actually a very smooth transition from the dilator to the angiocatheter. And this is what facilitates the passage of this dilator and angiocath over the wire and so that's the main component so the first thing we'll do is we'll start iv access right so standard stuff we're going to put in an 18 gauge angiocatheter here like we normally would and then we're going to use a cell denier technique where we're going to take a wire this 0 0.018 wire and we're going to introduce it into the angiocath itself and then we're just going to kind of wire this, rewire this um, angiocap itself, right? Make sure you got a decent amount of length in there, and then we're gonna go from there. And just like any cell denier technique, what you basically do is you take the angiocatheter off of this guy right here. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this wire up a little bit and just kind of show you. And then just like any other wiring technique, I'm going to put my dilator over my wire just like so. And things you might notice right now as I back my wire out is that this dilator is actually very flimsy, right? And so there's a technique I use to kind of prevent some of that, right? Because if you just push, you can actually bend the wire and the dilator pretty easily, right? So like any standard cylinder technique, I'm gonna hold my wire at the back end over here. But the key thing to this here is before you even get into the vessel, uh, what you have to do is actually get through the skin. In order, in order to facilitate getting through the skin, I generally, I'll take my finger, and what I'll do is I'll pinch between the angiocath and the dilator and then keep them together. And then I'll advance, right? Once I get a couple of millimeters in, and I know I'm pretty good past the skin, and maybe into the vessel, I'll back out again, and I'll grab up here, and I'll do the same thing while I pinch and squeeze as I advance, holding my wire, making sure my wire doesn't go any further. Once I get there, I just advance the angiocath as far as it will go. After that, same old thing. I'm going to take my wire and my dilator out. And now I'm left with a 14 gauge IV catheter instead of my 18 gauge peripheral IV. And so why would you do this, right? Obviously, you want to increase the amount of fluid that you can give to a patient if you want to give blood and uh, fluid resuscitation. And going from 18 gauge IV, I think you get 105 mLs per minute through that as far as flow rate. But when you put in a 14 gauge angiocatheter, you actually get 330 mLs as far as fluid per minute. So you significantly increase the amount of fluid that you can give or blood through that peripheral IV. For this slide here, I wanted to show you the smooth transition between the angiocatheter and the dilator itself. So the top picture here shows the entire component of the dilator and the angiocath on top of it or through it. The bottom picture here and what I have the arrow pointing to is actually the transition between the dilator itself as well as the angiocatheter. And as you can see, there's a really smooth transition between both, right? And so this is what really prevents you from getting caught on skin or the vessel as you advance your dilator and angiocatheter into the vessel. This here is a picture, of, up close picture of the 18 gauge angiocatheter versus the tip of the five French micro dilator. And as you can tell that, you know, the size is actually pretty comparable. And it may look like the 5 French dilator itself is actually a little bit thinner than the 18 gauge angiocatheter. 
And so if you have an 18 gauge angiocatheter already in, in theory, the micropuncture dilator should go through the hole that was created by the angiocatheter pretty easily. This is one thing I think I forgot to mention in the uh, previous video. And if you look at, I'm talking about forward pressure and counter pressure. And so if you ever put a central line in, right, you know, sometimes as you advance your dilator or your central line in, sometimes the skin crumples or the tissues crumple as you're pushing forward. And to kind of combat that, what you do is pull counter traction, right? And so the first thing generally what I'll do is once I'm getting ready to advance my angiocatheter over my dilator or my dilator and my angiocatheter, what I'll do is I'll pull counter traction as I get forward pressure and that will tighten up the uh, skin and the tissues so that that stuff doesn't get dragged in or kinked as you're going into the vessel itself. This concludes my short video on using a micropuncture kit to obtain large bore IV access. The one thing I want to say before I conclude is that I didn't really mention how to prep for this, but anytime you do a rewiring technique or some sort of wire technique that goes into a vessel, I always suggest using a sterile technique. Um, if you can, and it's an emergency, you do what you got to do. But if you have the time, try to prep sterilely. With that said, I want to say thank you for your time and your attention. And I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully use this technique sometime in the near future. Thank you.